And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, once again, our daily bread. Brother Art, Regal, Regal Room, Restoration Christian Fellowship, Regal Ministries, all together here for you. Our daily bread. What's our daily bread? Regal's daily inspiration. I also throw in the word encouragement. It's an encouragement, but it's empowered by God's holy word. Why? Why is that so imperative and important in our lives? Because if we're in God's word every day, if we just take in what he's saying to us, there is absolutely nothing, nothing that is placed in our path that he, through his word, will not lead us around, lead us over, or lead us through so that we are able to gain the victory through him. Let's pray together. God, thank you for the victory. Thank you for allowing us to see another day that is halfway past, but we know that with you, by checking in with you and by allowing your word to penetrate our being, we know that whatever it is that stands before us, it will not knock us down because by our side is you. And with the power of our testimony and the significance in our life through your word, we will conquer all. Bless your name, your mighty name. Amen. Let's just talk briefly today. Let's talk about the things we ask for ourselves. We ask God for. What are the things? We, we, we ask for so many things. Every day it's something new. But let's just focus on two things. Let, let me give you two things that we focus on that I believe we all could kind of come to a consensus that we agree on these things, but these aren't things that we think of on a regular basis. When we get down on our knees at night, a lot of the times we don't mention these two things. The first thing I want to talk about is rescue. We quite often ask God for rescue, for, for relief from certain situations in our life. What about bad relationships? You ever enter a bad relationship? It could be a friendship. It could be somebody you've been friends with for a few months and then you notice all of a sudden they're using you. You notice all of a sudden that their attitude changed. You, you notice that they're leading you down places that you don't want to go. So sometimes we don't want to hurt their feelings. At the same time, we don't want to be judged. But we seek God for a rescue. What about a romantic relationship? You're in it four or five months and it's time to get somewhat serious. It's time to make an announcement, but you're just saying to yourself, she's not the right one. He's not the right one. And God, could you please get me out of this predicament? We've all kind of been there one time or another, and we're seeking God for uh, somewhat of a rescue. What about regrets? Again, it kind of clicks in with the bad relationships, but there's so many things. We got into this class. We got into this business relationship, this, this, this business deal. We got into so many things and then, oh, my God, I can't believe that I did that. I can't believe that 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 I went into this thing or I, or I signed up for this thing. And I have a regret. God, would you please take my mind off of what I've done? Could you please rescue me and take me back to where I was before I ever saw this person or saw this thing? And I'll conclude with. with, with with signing up, something that we signed up for that we shouldn't have signed up for. So it attaches to all three. We sign up for relationships and friendships and we enter into things and we become regretful for just things that we signed up for, credit cards. We bought a car, we bought a house and later we just couldn't afford it. It's so many things that we seek rescue for, rescue for from, from God, but we actually don't recognize it. If it's not daily, it's by daily. If not, it's weekly. We're always seeking God for rescue. Here's the second thing. Protection. We're often asking God for protection. From what? How about confrontations? Re realistically, something is a little bit disturbed about you if you love to fight. If you love to see a person and you want to have an argument in the grocery store, you want to have an argument in the department store, you want to have an argument in DMV. 
most people don't want to have confrontations. So we, we, when we feel that that energy, that dark energy coming coming around us, we say, God, please protect me from that. And, and here's another one. We ask for God to protect us from the enemy. God, protect us from the enemy. Satan sends that one person into your life. We all have it. We all have her. We all have him. That one person into our life that you are just feeling, God, oh, they're here to, to just take me to a dark place that I don't want to go. God, could you protect me from the enemy? Could be the nicest person in the world, but they just do that one thing. That one thing. Here's, here's the final thing. Sin. We all fall to our knees and say, God, keep me from doing these things that I truly, truly don't want to do that amount to sin. So it's, it's, it's we're looking for rescue. Quite often we're looking for protection. Here's the question. What makes them respond? Many times we pray and we feel that we don't hear anything, but it's all, always that one thing or that second thing that is in our hands that encourages it. And we can even inspire God to respond to the petitions that we bring to him. So what makes God respond? We always go to scripture, our daily bread. Here's our daily bread. Psalm 91, verse 14. Let's read it together. Very slow. Because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. Let's pause. Because he loves me. I will rescue him. This is God speaking, says, says the Lord. Because he loves me. It, it, it's not just what we say with our mouth. We have to remember Romans 10, 9 and 10. It's about what's in your heart. And what God is saying is in that moment of desperation, in that moment where you need rescue, when you're out in the middle of the ocean by yourself and there's no one there because quite possibly you made a decision that's brought you out there or you were deceived by someone else that sent you out there and you're calling for God. When you're calling for God in that desperate state, it's not scream that's exiting your mouth it's what is registering for him in your heart because you love him you can love someone quickly when you're in need but that love it, it, it lives and it resonates in your heart far before when you desired God to rescue you from the very thing that you feel inside is meant to take you out. Now, let's talk protection. Let's finish the scripture. Let's start over. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. Why? For he acknowledges my name. Because you recognize who he is. And you're not shameful. You're not withdrawn. You're willing Every day, not just to fall on your knees beside your bed, not just to go into the bathroom or the closet and pray. You're willing on your job. You're willing out on your route. You're, you're, you're willing on your lunch break. You're willing on the ride home. You're willing on the phone. You're willing on social media. In everything you do, you're willing to acknowledge how great God is by simply saying his name, Jesus. How is it? that he answers our call to be rescued? How is it that he answers our plea for protection? It's very simple, friends, which is our daily bread. We love him and we continue to call his name. That's our daily bread today. Follow us, subscribe to all the things that they tell us to do when it comes to social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. We're on all three every day, Monday through Friday. We just come to you with this at some point during the day. Subscribe and connect. And here is the most important thing we need to do as believers and as Christians. Share God's word. We lose. Not them. We lose. We lose because we're not obeying God by allowing the body of Christ to enlarge, by exposing the truth. And the truth is his love. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow on our daily.